After Tim Crawl the Grinch ruined yesterday's episode, we're hoping for better today. Thank you for all of your feedback on yesterday's episode with regards to the whole Wilkes to strike a Sinodelican thing. Uh, that would seem to be very popular, so that is what we're going to do. Outside of that, I don't know as there's anything else I'm going to do in this window. We are still scouting a couple of other players, so uh, it depends what offers we potentially get in for our own players in this window and other potential things that are available to us with regards... Oh, well, it's going to take forever, isn't it? Oh, no, eight weeks. Okay, I, t I, <laughs> I saw these... 659 weeks to a right back. It's... Almost certainly because his defensive stats are so low, but still. <laughs> Is it? He'd have retired by then. Wilkes to strike is going to take eight weeks. So it's certainly something we can we can do right now. And uh, then we can we can look to bring Adelican in on a, on a free uh, immediately, pretty much. Which is what we're going to do here. And now, I'm still waiting for scout reports on Connor Gallagher and Josh Windass. Uh, I'm probably unlikely to go for Chuba Akpom at this stage. But Adelican, he's got previous with us, obviously, with uh, a season on loan last year. Very good season on loan as well, to be fair to him. Uh, we will bring him in. And he only wants rotation as well, which is superb. And it'd be good to have some quality as an option. Well, not even as an option. He's going to start with Wilkes going up top. So uh, definitely worthwhile bringing in. Recommended wage is £15,500. I probably try and get him for 10. I'm pretty sure he'd accept even just 10 grand a week, to be honest. And yeah. The recommended wage was a lot higher there than it necessarily needed to be. So, for today, and for potentially the considerable future, Wilkes at striker and a delicate on the right-hand side. Wilkes, 75 plus 3, 75 plus 5. It's not much of a, of a knock for him to be in that striker role. And that's what we'll do. You can see everyone's kind of struggling a little bit for, for fitness and stamina. We have some players that we're looking to get rid of in this January transfer window, some players that we'll look to send out on loan as well. If we do bring another central midfielder in, then certainly players like Ewing will go out on loan. And I'm potentially considering sending either Barr or Andrew out on loan, especially players like Nielsen, who we certainly now don't need uh, in the immediate future, and Grant as well, who's very unhappy because he wants a contract and I'm not giving him one. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens over the course of today's January transfer. We will start by playing this FA Cup game against Brighton. Then we'll play Leeds and we'll see how things go. I'm mean, expecting to go out against Brighton, to be completely honest. So I'm not expecting another FA Cup tie to be drawn. But we'll, we'll play it game at a time. We'll take it game at a time and see what happens. We do have a decent amount of money. Not a massive amount of money, but a decent amount of money available to spend in January should we want to. But I'm not sure how far... 13 odd million pounds would stretch so we are going to need to sell to buy probably to bring in players of decent quality but we are looking to sell a couple of players so uh, the opportunity should hopefully be there if we can get rid of the players we want to get rid of and if we get big bids for high-end players from bigger clubs we will certainly have to consider selling them uh, but for now it's time to travel to uh where do brighton play the amex it's the amex isn't it i think it's the amex we'll find out in a moment it's the amex Time to head to the Amex then. I am going to have to rotate slightly, rather heavily actually. Uh, mm, this isn't going to go well, I don't think. Brighton in the FA Cup coming up next. Brighton then, Matthew Ryan in goal. Lamptey, Clark, Feltman, Burnham, Bernardo. Mope and Lacardia are up top. That looks like a pretty strong Brighton team, to be honest. Maxime Kakare in the midfield as well. Rangier and Moda, I'm not too sure about. But that's, that's a decent Brighton side, to be fair. This is not going to be easy, especially considering... I've had to change a few players around, as you saw earlier on. So Barnett is actually starting on the wing. I, in fact, I, I may even have started. I could still put Barnett up top and move Wilkes out wide again just for this one game. Uh, Ewing is in the midfield. Fleming and Greaves into the uh, 11 as well in the defence. It's not a strong side from me. But hopefully a side that can at least compete with Brighton and not get embarrassed like we did in a couple of games in the last episode. They are inside to Pinto. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Nearly stepped in and took that away from me. Wilkes looking there for Charlie Barnett. Tarek Lamptey takes it away as a Brighton man falls to the ground. Moda into Lacardia. The two up top is going to be difficult to deal with. A 5 4 1 is still fairly defensive, but a 5 3 2, especially if the two wingbacks really kick on, which as you can see, Tarek Lamptey is doing. A 5-3-2 with attacking wingbacks really is quite a difficult offensive setup to defend against. 
But Pinto could look for Wilkes here. And he should have the legs on Feltman. And he does have the legs on Feltman. And he can't get away from the Dutchman still. Not the best of clearances from Ryan, though. Unfortunately, he's picked out Tarek Lamptey pretty superbly. 23 minutes in, neither side really threatened the other to this point. It's been a bit of a stalemate, but they've had a lot of the ball. And I'm having to work very hard just to stay in the game. They've had a hell of a lot of the ball. 77% of it so far, to be fair, in the opening 25 minutes. But no chances from either team yet. We'll see how that carries on in the remainder of the game. We'll see how that carries on in the remainder of this highlight. Tara Lamptey's about to have a shot. Tara Lamptey's about to score a goal. 1-0 Brighton. And the task just got even bigger. Although I'm sure the board would understand if we went out to Premier League opposition. That's a decent ball and Kakare just gets to it first. Mope, nicely intercepted by Reese Burke. Pinto got a man with him. Out to Adelican, back in a whole shirt for the first time in a while. Looking to pick out Anthony Wilkes, the man that... Anthony Wilkes? Malik Wilkes. I don't know where Anthony Wilkes came from. Bernardo, see the runner Mope, he's gone to Lucardia. Back across to Kakare again. High low. Showing a little bit of Premier League quality here, Brighton. Kakare. Back to Bernardo. Lifted in. Burke should win this header and has done well. Ewing will not get to that first. Ranger does. And Kakare offering an option for Bernardo. An option he isn't able to use yet. They are fighting hard to get the ball off the Brazilian. Bernardo's Brazilian, isn't he? Ranger. Burke. Oh, he did get a foot in there. Mope, they just kept going one man further across. And it's 2-0 Brighton just before half-time. Ah, Murder with the goal. Just into one, into two, into three, bang. <laughs> Game over, I think. Barnett. Oh, poor attempted pass. Alexis McAllister with a lovely... First time pass to Lacardia out to Tarek Lamptey. Score with their first goal. We've won it back, though. It was always going to be difficult, even if we had a full-strength side available to us to, uh, to take on Brighton. But with the situation as it is, it's no real surprise that we're 2-0 down. With the way that yesterday went, though, I'd rather have lost this game with a weakened side than... Oh, that's a lovely ball. I'm not quite going to get there. Than have lost another league game because we really can't afford to lose many more of those if we genuinely want to challenge for the playoffs this season. So there's a full week between each game remaining in the month of January and that, that will suit us. We'll be able to get everybody back to full fitness, at least everybody that isn't injured currently, back to full fitness and in a position where we're at our strongest to, uh, to take on the future opponents remaining in the month of January. We've got Swansea next, as you saw. Lucardia going off. I'm not sure who that was coming on for him there. Pinto will deliver the corner. It's Odson Edouard. Where's that going? Onto the roof of the net, unfortunately. Odson Edouard on for Brighton. That's a hell of a player to bring on. Oh, it's another corner, is it? Okay. Well, Pinto's pretty tired, so we'll take him off for... That's all right. Let's take him off for McGuinness. Let's put McGuinness to striker. Wilkes out there, and then Barnett into the middle as a cam. Okay, let's change things. Actually, then a delicate... It's Wilkes is a right winger, so let's do that instead. Not that it actually changes anything. Fair enough. Right, let's see what we can do with the remaining 23 minutes. Can we can we score a consolation goal, perhaps? Oh, no, says Tarek Lamptey off the line. Bayer, back to Adelican on his... Well, I say debut. His, his debut back in the side, I guess. And he's just on side here, I think, Adelican. Matthew Ryan makes the save, and he was offside. Hell of a clearance off the line, though, from... Uh, Oh, no, it's a corner. Hell of a clearance off the line from Tarek Lamptey. Josh McGuinness is immediately having an impact back in the starting lineup. Well, not starting lineup. Back in the first team from a corner. That's how he scored a number of goals last season in our, prom in our promotion season. And that's how he lost the ball a number of times in our promotion season too. 15 to go. Still 2-0 Barnet. Barnet? Brighton. And uh, I think if anyone's going to score another goal, it's probably going to be them. His odds on Edouard. There's only two minutes to go. And they're looking for a third to add some gloss to the tie. They might well get it here. No, George Long in the way. Alexis McAllister can't extend their lead. George Long furious with the defenders in front of him. But again, they had a man over. They've just been too good for me here, unfortunately. Tammy Abraham coming on for Brighton. I think that might have been a permanent signing as well for Brighton. Oh, it's a lovely take by odds on Edouard. Unfortunately for him, Bayard intercepts. But that'll be us. For the FA Cup this year. 
one and done for the competition in uh, the second season. Unfortunately, Brighton ease through against lower league opposition and we are out of the FA Cup. Never mind, with the draw that we had and the way that we were having to rotate with the fixture list, Progression was never really on the cards. I did see Man United draw. I didn't quite see who it was against, actually. Youth Scout report available. That'll be the players that we've already got, though, isn't it? Oh, no. Hello. 78 to 94. Uh, six foot two. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe. We'll call him up. We'll see what he looks like. Uh, I'm going to say no to you because I signed the other guy. Uh, you're a definite no. Sorry, pal. That's a definite no. That's a definite no. We'll wait and see where you play. Six foot three, probably centre back, I guess. Ah, Swansea coming up next. We're still solidly mid table, so we're looking okay in the league. Really want to put a run of it, run of results together though, if we can in the championship. We've had the final scout reports come back, and whilst Josh Windass is quick, that's about it really. I don't think he's going to be good enough to come in and do a job. I'm sorry, Josh. I'm sorry, Dean. But I'm not going to be signing your son. Chuba Atpom, I'll remove from the list now as well. But Conor Gallagher, if I can get him in on loan, then that would be great for our midfield. And they are potentially open to loaning him to me. Uh, basic terms, uh, just a normal loan and a short-term loan to the end of this season, I think, is where we'll stand for now. Because it's basically just covering George Honeyman's injury, isn't it? And they're letting him come to me, or they're willing to let him come to me on a short-term loan. I'd rather not pay... All of his wages. So if I could pay just 30%, Frank, that would be great. You do have a lot of money. 50-50. Oh, I can't really argue with that, can I? 50-50 is fair. Thank you, Frank. Provided Conor Gallagher agrees to come to us, he will jump into the starting lineup alongside Doherty and uh, hopefully give us some extra points, an extra boost in performance in the centre of midfield. Swansea away, Coventry away, Derby at home, Leeds at home. Ideally, I'd like to sim the home games and play the aways, but with Leeds and Derby, should probably probably play those. Uh, Coventry, where are Swansea? Swansea are... I must have just missed them. Are they in and around me? Swansea, where are you? Oh, 18th. Yeah. I'm quite happy to sim both Swansea and Coventry. We should, on paper, get quite a good victory from these. Ah, good. 2-0 in that first one. Scott off the bench to grab a goal. Good. Uh, did that just? Did I just glance a Fleetwood victory? Fuck's sake. Why would you turn me down, Conniger? Co Conniger. It's both of his names put together. Connor Gallagher, why would you turn me down? Aston Villa. Very undervalue. But it's... Oh, God. No, they're top of our... They're in our league. If they hadn't have been relegated, I'd have probably had to... Oh. Leonardo Pinto. I mean, they've come in cheekily, substantially under value. He's valued at 44. They've come in at 37. They are they are almost certainly going to go up this year. They're almost certainly going to win the league title this year. The gap at the top is 16 points. I'm torn, I'm torn, I'm torn. I think I did glance another Fleetwood victory. Let's have a look. Fleetwood. Or was it Bournemouth? Yeah, Fleetwood 2, Charlton 0. Oh, is the comeback on for Fleetwood Town? I think... If they'd... If they'd been... More... If they'd been closer to his value, then... I'd have been willing to negotiate with them, but I think they're being a bit cheeky there. They're kind of being a bit brash, like, we're top of the league, we're having a great season, let's try and get one of their best players under value and just kind of throw our weight around a little bit. I'm not buying it, Villa, and you're not buying Leonardo Pinto, not for a fee like that. If you want to sign him and want to negotiate with me, give me, offer me a deal worth considering, or at least... Don't be dicks about it and try and steal my best player away for a, a price that would really do me no favours whatsoever. If they come back in, if they come back in with a bid upwards of 45 million, then I'd be willing to negotiate with them. I'm not selling him for 45 million. He's going for 60 plus if they want to sign him. But 
if they come back in with a with a deal or with a negotiation, I'm willing to negotiate with them if they aren't going to be too cheeky with it. Thank you very much. I don't think I'm being too beyond the realms of uh, beyond the realms of reality. There am I by saying no to that underbid. That's like a 20% under even just valuation, let alone the fact that he's a key player for me. I'm not I'm not letting them do that to me. I'm not being taken for granted. Sorry, Aston Villa, but no. Let's go and play Leeds United, unless there's any other emails. Let's go and play Leeds United. Melier in goal for Leeds. Ailing your end head, Kok, Kalashinets. Calvin Phillips, imagine a 4-1-4-1. Rafinha, marvellous in the camber. Kavetsi, uh, was it? Or Paveda on the left and Rodrigo up top. Funny that they play a 4-1-4-1 because wasn't it 4-1 to them when they uh, beat us at Ellen Road? It certainly was a convincing win for Leeds, wasn't it? Hoping for better on this occasion. And now with everybody back fully uh, fully fit again, other than, of course, George Honeyman and uh, Joshua Emmanuel, who remain injured, hopefully we'll be better than we were against Brighton. And your device is certainly starting things off well by getting stuck in there. Malik Wilkes, now is certainly a time to prove your worth at striker in a derby like this. The camber. Rafinha, oh, it's perfectly timed for Rodrigo. He's in behind here. He's got a great goal in the one at Ellen Road. Rafinha back to Ailing. Marvellous Nakamba. Nice tackle by Jordi Device, but still Nakamba wins out and continues to win out. Kavecchi. No! Oh, that's harsh. That's just a show of strength from the centre back. He's just shrugged him off. Just stepped in and bumped him over. And Rodrigo needs to get on the weights. That is not a foul. He did stick a toe in, but I think Rodrigo's got to be stronger there. I don't think I don't think that's a foul. I might be biased. I probably am biased. You probably think that's a penalty. Rodrigo steps up for Leeds and straight up misses the target. Whether it was a penalty or not, they haven't scored. Justice done or a wasted opportunity for Leeds United? You tell me in the comment section, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, Jordi, thank you. Deary me, that was an awful pass. Wilkes, short to Pinto. Now would be the ultimate insult, wouldn't it, to go and score from their penalty. And to be fair, Kolesinac and Luke Ayling aren't the fastest of players to have at wing-back, so we might, if we can work the opportunities, have a decent time of things playing the ball around out wide, but not able to do anything other than test Melier there. Rafinha is going to test me too. I'm short on pace at centre-back. They're short on pace at full-back. They've got pace out wide. And to be fair with Rodrigo, pace in the middle too. Pace everywhere for Leeds United. Uh, Lewis Potter just going to kick it anywhere will do for me. And actually it works quite nicely. Hey, Bayar will get to that and turn. Doherty. Go on then, go for a run. Hakib, why not? Doherty's there again if you can find him. Wilkes is found. Is that a foul? It is. Free kick in a decent position. I'm not going to take that quickly. Pinto can shoot from here. 27 yards out. We will give this a crack. Now, can we test the goalkeeper? I'm going to put quite a bit of power on it. But try and time it as best I can. But the keeper is equal to it. A decent save. Pinto to deliver from the set piece instead. Device heads wide. He's got about a 7% conversion rate from corners. Your device. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> Looks like we're going to take our nil-nil scoreline in at half-time, though. Which, if you offered me that at full-time, I'd probably take. Lofted in behind to Paveda. Cross could come in from a good position here for Leeds. He's got support back there if he needs it. Kolasinac found well. Kavecchi, nice tackle. Counter is on. Can we get away from Kolasinac? Come on, Adela. Can surely be quick enough to do that? He tried his best there, Kolasinac, but it's not enough. And the Delican is in. And if I can just find Pinto at the back post here. Oh, we could have had a 1-0 lead. But Luke Ayling was there in the way. Leads with a change. Marvellous Nakamba going off for them. Tyler Roberts coming on. And he scored against us last time we played them. Win that, please. Ah, oh, Colin does. Back to Pinto. And on the edge of the box. How can he be offside? Colin won that header. What? Ah, oh, bollocks. Never mind, still nil-nil then with just over 25 minutes to play. 
But, I mean, a nil-nil draw against the team that you lost 4-1 to earlier on in the season is a pretty tasty result, as far as I'm concerned. Aye! And we could have been through there as well, but I got cock-blocked. Forward to Pinto. Just poke that there to Wallace. And forward to Wilkes. He's not really had much of a chance at striker to impress so far, Wilkes, has he, to be fair to him. So I can't really judge him at this stage. Lewis Potter. He's made a good run again there, Wallace. Doherty, Wilkes, spin the man and firing the shot. It was decent, worth the effort. Melia with a comfortable enough save, though. But, yeah, we need a little bit more, boys. Keep it going, and we might well take the lead in this one. Kolasinac off for them, and I'm not sure who it was that was coming on. I didn't recognise him. Oh, Stuart Dallas. Obviously doesn't have a, a face scan. Wins that header there, Stuart Dallas. And Pinto will deliver again, and Device could win this one. It's going to fall to a delicate. Back there is Doherty. Wilkes. Oh, I just tried to cheekily lift it through, but it's not going to work, unfortunately. And now we might get caught going the other way from our own corner. Helder Costa's got the fresh legs. Lifting that to Rafinha, who's very tired. Still able to find a pass, but a, a pass that goes straight to Reese Burke, thankfully. Just over 10 minutes to go. Still there's the chance of victory here against Leeds, but... Melier's been in the way of everything we've thrown at them so far. Doherty looking for Wilkes, not able to get it to him. Ten minutes to go, I'll make a change, but I'm not sure how much good it'll do. Calvin Phillips, short to Kovetsi. Ball is on there to Rodrigo. I'm worried about him just opening the taps and sprinting at me. Fancy pass to Kovetsi. Ball over the top to Rafinha, who on his weaker right foot misses the target, thankfully for me. Really well worked by Lee's lovely ball over the top. And he could have struck that on his left. But he chose to go with the other side and it hasn't worked for them. I'm, 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 I'm making a change is what I was trying to say. Until I apparently had a stroke. Uh, Bayer down the line to Charlie Barnett who's come on now on the wing. I'll show you the change that I made. Scott is on as is Barnett and Dave Gunn in the midfield as well. Trying to uh, make something work here. Barnett out wide. Wilkes to Cam and Scott up top. I don't know if it'll be enough to get something off leads other than a single point but I will try and get three if we can sneak a goal in the final few minutes and it would have to be snuck to get it into the back of the net because Melier has been keen-eyed to everything so far Dave Gunn arriving here is Wilkes oh, at pace and he's past one defender and he's oh, not able to get past another Dallas defending well and Tyler Roberts ah, there's to be one more chance it's going to go Leeds this way isn't it Rafinha could keep this in. He can't. Can we quickly? And it would have to be very quickly. Get this up the other end. Maybe. Lewis Potter bursting. And there's Scott on the shoulder of the defender. Not going to get there first. Llorente does. Well, nil-nil against the side that battered me earlier on this season. That's respectable. But after having some of the chances we did against Leeds today, I guess they could say the same about some of the chances they had against me. Uh, never mind, a, a draw is good enough against promotion chasing Leeds United. I'll take it. We'll move forward after the victory against Swansea. We should also get victory against... Oh, that's completed already, Malik. We said eight weeks. It's been like three. Buzzing. We'll take that. Uh, oh, it's going to take forever for anything to happen. 23 weeks to target, man. All right, we'll do that then. Great, Malik Wilkes is now by default a striker and... Um, I accept I'm not the first time on the team ship boss, but I should be getting more games. Show me I need to play you, James. Hmm, if he if he starts to get... Oh, Burke's development. Has he gone up as well? He's 77 rated now, Reese Burke. Love to see that. And actually, his sprint speed's pretty good, even if his acceleration is a bit lower down. Okay, that's, that's bottom half of the Premier League. That's the same... Yeah, it's the same email I had before, isn't it? I thought for a minute they'd come in again with the same offer. Aston Villa, I was going to go on a bit of a rant again. Not to worry. Oh, a Nielsen loan offer from Utrecht. Ah, loan to buy. No, thank you. Delegate. Uh, actually, short-term loan so that he only goes for this season and we can loan him again next year. Hopefully, they'll agree to that. I will see you against Coventry. Matt Ingram has come to me again and uh, complained. So he's submitted a transfer request. I did offer him a new deal. And he is on a new deal. But he's still not happy. So uh, they've agreed for Nielsen to go. And we have actually had a bid for Ingram. And if he's just going to be a nuisance and negatively affect all the morale in the side, I'll sell him now rather than wait until I've got someone else to replace him. We still have, for the rest of the season, uh, young 
Cartwright. I'm not going to need to call on him because, let's face it, goalkeepers very rarely, if ever, get injured on, uh, on career mode. So Ingram could go. We do have a couple of youngsters in the in the youth setup already that could come up. And to be fair, it might even be better than Cartwright at this stage as well, the two Germans. So if Ingram's just going to be an upset in the dressing room, then he can get gone. Off to Miami with you. Bye-bye. Confirmation that Ingram is sold. Bye. Good riddance. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, mate. Coventry City. Struggling in the league. Down in 22nd. And... Their struggles continue despite a brief fight back through Bapaga in the 89th minute. We get ourselves a 2-1 win thanks to Wilkes uh, setting things off in the right way. Thank you very much. That three points sends us into the top 10. Fleming's happy with some of the football he's been getting recently. So I'd like a little bit more from you. But thank you for improving your performances. And um, I say... Into the top 10. We are three points off Preston in seventh and only five points off the playoffs now. Hello. Things are starting to get a little bit more interesting now. We haven't really done anything in the transfer window yet other than bring a delicate in. Derby County. Derby County. <sighs> Didn't have the best of times against them last time we played them. Did we? No. A 3-1 defeat in a game I really thought that we should have won prior to kickoff. And they are right behind me in the league. 10th versus 11th. Big one. This Our goal difference is terrible. Minus 7 and I'm in 10th. That's awful. Goal difference for everybody around me is positive. Middlesbrough in 13th are in the minuses though. And it's from there down. Everyone is like, oh, for, oh Fleetwood have got another three points. <gasps> the comeback continues. Go on, boys. Get it done. If Fleetwood stay up, best comeback of all time. Right. Derby County coming up next as Nielsen is going out on loan to Utrecht until the end of the season. Ajax have offered for Wilkes, but it's a terrible offer. 74 rated Jürgen Ekelenkamp plus 2.75 million pounds. 74 rated Jürgen Ekelenkamp. Um, what is your... What is... Oh, I don't know the name, but... Helen Camp. 70 rated, potential of 80. Doesn't look that spectacular. I'm going to turn that down. Reese Burke has had a bid of 10 million from Porto. Now that is something I may well have to do something about. If I can get upwards of 17, 18? Then that's great. Yeah, he's one of my best players, but... I can't really... Have you got anyone that I could have in return at centre-back? Ivan Marcano, 34 years of age. Fabian Cher could be a good experience centre-back to have. I don't know anything about him in this save, though. Fabian Cher, plus £10 million. Maybe. I hope Fabian Cher's not declined in rating too much. Nope. They don't want to let Fabian Cher leave. Okay. Fine. They turned me down just as I turned Ajax down with a player swap. Device, Benfica. Apparently my centre-backs are in... Uh, are in big supply in Portugal. Uh, have you got any centre-backs I could have? Jan Vertonghen. Otamendi. <laughs> Issa Diop would be good. Conti could be decent. Let's go Issa Diop. He's got Premier League Premier League quality. Issa Diop plus the transfer fee. Okay. Without knowing what they're valued at or rated at, I can't really give an accurate, an accurate depiction as to what the right sort of transfer fee would be like to offer there. So I, I don't know what I could do differently. I, I don't want to offer just a straight player swap. Nor do I want to offer just a straight player swap for a smaller fee. Because I don't know if I'm doing myself a disservice. And without seeing what those players are valued at, I can't I can't accurately make a decision as to whether that's a good idea or not to go for that deal. So all I can do is offer what I think is there or thereabouts and hope that they negotiate from there. They've decided not to negotiate there on two occasions. They could equally quite easily come back and alter the deal that I've offered them, take the player out, offer another just straight transfer fee again, 
But they've just d d decided on both occasions, both teams, to just go bye. And uh, that's their fault, not mine. If they don't want to negotiate, they don't want to negotiate. Hello, Wilfred and Deedee to Manchester United for £110 million. What the shit? <laughs> so Man United have signed Lewandowski and Wilfred and Deedee in this window. Hi, hi, hi. There have been some intriguing deals in this transfer window. Let's go and get a win and then we can show you everything that's happened. I've been checking the weather before every game that I've played so far today and the one time I don't and just blitz my way through is the one time that it actually snows and we're going to have a white ball in the snow again. Absolutely typical. And against the team that are playing in white. Thankfully they've got black shorts. Ah, that serves me right for just completely skipping through and not double checking, doesn't it? Here is Derby starting on David Marshall in goal. Bernard Miazga a one yellow card away from a suspension. They've got Jack Marriott up top. Uh, Yosef Zoon on the right-hand side. Shinny, the captain's armband. Rooney in the midfield again. They beat us last time we played them, as you saw. It's, thankfully, it's not quite as snowy here as it was in the last one. It was it Bournemouth, wasn't it, when we lost 3-0? So the ball is actually slightly easier to see here. That's intriguing to see that there's actually different, different snowy conditions. Previously, it's just been like the one... There's been one snowy condition, but this is snowy and overcast and actually quite dark. This is almost snowy at night without, or snowy at dusk without any floodlights. The other one was super bright and really difficult to, to play in. I guess that's the power of next gen. They just have more options. But regardless, at least I can see the football on this occasion. I see it better than before anyway. Hopefully we can see ourselves get a better result as well. We lost 3-0 to Bournemouth. In the other snowy game, we lost 3-1 to Derby when we played at Pride Park. Let's not concede three and lose on this occasion. Josh Viet inside to Holmes. Nice lunge. Okay, he fell over. Yeah, in the opinion of the referee only was that a foul. And now the man that has one of the best free kicks in the country... Very nearly gives Derby a 1-0 lead. Thankfully, we've got one of the best goalkeepers in the championship between the sticks for us. And George Long makes another very good stop. They've had three chances in this game, though, Derby. And they have been the better side as they were last time. Similarly with the Leeds. But, as was the case with Leeds, we're holding them to a draw this time. So we're clearly showing improvements as a team, both in results and league position. And it's about the 7,000th off, 7, offside that Derby had in this first half. So certainly they need to improve on their positioning. Oh, but they really have played quite a high press and hard press throughout this game. And it's catching me out. Jack Marriott has support from Jozviak over the top towards Brown, who can't keep it in play. The one time he's onside and he can't keep it in play. Delican, Pinto, Doherty, Wallace into Lewis Potter. Wilkes gets there first. Can we have a chance right at the death of the half? We might well. Wilkes has got support arriving here and Lewis Potter's in a good position and Pinto's in. Is he onside? He, he's buried it in the back of the net. We'll find out in a moment. Is he onside? Yes, he is! In stoppage time at the end of the first half. They failed to break the offside trap all game. And in stoppage time at the end of the first half, we've broken their offside trap to perfection with the ball through to Pinto, who doesn't score many. But he scored now, and he might well give us three points to send us even closer to the playoffs. Burn. That's loose from him. That's loose from me. Elder with a poor header, trying to find two teammates in the middle there. That's a nice ball into Jack Marriott. That's a nice ball out to Jozviak as well. And they're in here, and they're on side. Shock. Jozviak. Yes, well in. By our... I need to see what his progress is like, actually. Oh, my God, that press. That press. Help. Mm. Give me Ooh. questions of a penalty there. If he'd have gone to ground, he might well have gotten one. Rooney to burn. Oh, we forced him all the way back. I tell you what, that press was scary. Lewis Potter. Aye, we'll try again. Oh, for f As if. No. Yosef soon. No. Aye, which way is he going to go? Don't fail him. Oh, no. Jesus. No, go away. Leave me alone. Oh my god, I cannot cope with their press. Burke down the line to Adelican. At last, we've gotten away from our own box. Pinto support here from Wallace. Make the run, please, Wilkes. He has done. And out wide here is Lewis Potter. And we'll look for Malik Wilkes again. Oh, he doesn't have a goal, though. 
Oh, Wil maybe I'm cursed. Wilkes hasn't been any better at striker than anyone else in this team so far. Not like I've gotten massive amount of goals. I've not even had that many chances, to be fair. Maybe I'm just not playing very good football today. But certainly Malik Wilkes hasn't offered me a massive amount of options in that striker. I'll give him another couple of episodes before reverting the decision. But still, I, I have hope that we can push on and get ourselves into a playoff position. We're winning this game. I guess there is... Oh, that looked like a hit and arm from Burt. We look like we're going to get three points here against Derby. To send us closer to the playoffs. It was only five points the gap, wasn't it? Knight on for Yosef soon out wide. George Long could have come for that. He elected to let Wallace head it clear, which he's done well, in fairness to him. And with 25 to go now, also, probably including stoppage, Derby continue to press. Brown. Oh, nice little drop of shot. That's dummy. Wilkes tracking back. No. Come back here. Oh, good ball in. Shinny flicks it on, win that header. Away. I'm not taking any risks at the back now. I'm not even letting them press me. I'm just punting it as far as I can away from goal. A Delican for Scott. Scott up top. Wilkes out wide. Let's try old tried and tested, shall we? Scott played well in yesterday's episode. Maybe. Maybe he is the answer. I'll continue with Wilkes up top in the majority of games. But I'll still continue to give players like Barnett and Scott the opportunity. Because that's what you guys would like as well. But for the time being, Wilkes will continue to start up top at least. And for the time being, we will continue to try and keep Derby at bay. But Jesus Christ, they will not stop. Whether they've got possession or not, the press is on towards my goal, isn't it? Shinny to Rooney, dinked in. Marriott knocks that down to Holmes. He's offside. Into the middle again as a decent delivery. Oh, it's a goal kick. That might be enough for us. That might seal three points. For Hull City, how much closer to the top six can we get with this victory? Can we even get a second goal? Doherty's in behind here. Greg Doherty. It's two. We're going to win in style. A late goal to seal it. And seems to go along with it. In the snow. We didn't have a winter wonderland in December. But January's been pretty kind to us. That will do very nicely indeed. That will do really, really good things for us. Confidence-wise, league-wise, positionally and points tally-wise and goal difference-wise as well. Getting ourselves back towards a positive goal difference is going to be important. Let's crack on and move forwards with the rest of the season. We're out of the FA Cup. We're out of the Carabao Cup. All we can do to concentrate on now is get ourselves into those playoffs. Right, it's January transfer deadline day. And we haven't had the opportunity to move on the Deadwood that we were hoping to move on. Bernardo played against us for Brighton. He's since moved down a division to Aston Villa, who topped the table. Surprising to see that. Really surprised to see that. We tried to move on players like Josh McGuinness. And it appears that no one is interested in them. I have loads of people on the transfer list and loan list. And nobody wants any of them. I, I cannot move on my Deadwood. Eddie and Ketty has gone to Torino. Moussa Dembele, not Moussa Dembele, Usman Dembele, 124.3 million pounds to Chelsea. Jesus. We had a 1.1 billion pound deadline day in the summer. Are we going to get one? Oh, Burke. Milan! AC Milan. <laughs> I can't stand in my man's way for Milan, can I? When AC Milan come knocking, you negotiate. Is is there anyone they might consider? Not really. Simon Kier, Dan Axel, Zagadou. I could try for Simon Kier just to get a replacement in. But maybe maybe this is the opportunity for players like McLaughlin to come in and, and have a, a part to play. I'll ask for £19.5 million pounds from... For them for respect. Oh well, they're not really to not really wanting to negotiate much at all, are they? Uh 15. I'll come down considerably. If you come up considerably. 12.1. 13 and a half. I'm not I'm not asking for much. Come on. Come on, AC Milan. You're AC Milan. I don't think I've been too harsh there. I started off. A lot higher and came down considerably 
on numerous occasions there. I, I'm sorry. I tried. I tried to negotiate that as best I could in a realistic way. And AC Milan just weren't willing to play ball, it seems. Salzburg have offered for device. I don't know whether I could... I feel relatively comfortable in turning Salzburg down. I'm going to turn Salzburg down. I'm sorry I couldn't agree a deal with AC Milan. I know you would have wanted me to for realism purposes. It's not like I was asking for the world, was it? Ewing, we have had a negotiation in for him. Uh, Short-term loan, thank you. Short-term loan. We'll see if we can negotiate that and get him out. I mean, it's still a massive deadline day. We're almost 700 million. So, whoa. It's over 800 million now. That took a jump. And Ewing is going and a transfer offer for Pinto. I am terrified. Ajax, 47.3. With one hour to go in transfer deadline day. With one hour to go. They've bid for Leonardo Pinto. And it's straight money and it's above valuation. Ah, oh, God, I'm going to have to let him go, aren't I? Balls. Big, hairy testicles. Oh, I'll ask for 60... I'll ask for 60. Oh, can I ask for more than that? I don't want to be too greedy because we've already out-negotiated ourselves with AC Milan. 50.7. They're certainly coming up. I will come down considerably then. How about 58? How about 58? Look, I've come down a lot. You come up a bit. 52.4. We'll settle at 54 then. We'll settle at 54. I, I have to let him go to Ajax. A young Brazilian. But there's only an hour to go. We might get lucky. He might run out of time. Oh, I genuinely don't know now. Yeah! Pinto stays! Pinto stays! Pinto stays! Pinto stays! We keep our boy! We keep our boy! Yeah! I'm delighted with that! Ah! Oh, get in! I'm sorry, Ix. You just weren't quick enough. Yes! Pinto stays! Pinto stays! That's huge for us! Massive! And I try... It's not like I architect... Like, I... Architecturally, I... I don't even know what the word is I'm looking for. I architected that one. I didn't manufacture a scenario in which I could end up keeping him. I genuinely went to sell him there and he still stayed with me. Let's go. Not that I ever architect scenarios for players to stay with me. Uh, Usman Dembele to Chelsea. Biggest deal of this window. Wilfred Ndidi for 110 million to Manchester. Who splashed out in the summer as well, didn't they? On Serge Gnabry. Let's have a look. What else did we get? Marcel Sabitzer on deadline day for £83 million to Barcelona. Lovendowski to uh, Manchester United. Uh, Jovic to Bayern. Emerson to Bayern. What else have we got January? Alexander Isak to Inter. Mateo Kovacic to Paris Saint-Germain. Brozovic to Bayern. Pulisic to Real Madrid. Kunda to Lazio. Uh, Diego Carlos to Spurs. There's been some massive deals. Uh, Montiel to Dortmund. Canate to Atletico Madrid. We had 1.1 billion. Both deadline days alone has been nearly £2 billion. Just on deadline day. Belotti to Leipzig on in this window. Oscar to Roma in this window. Masraoui to Barcelona. Gerson's to Atletico Madrid. Castiles to Bayern. Aaron Barry to Hertha. It's not necessarily as... Headliner figure, is it? Or headliner transfer. Hamoso to Everton. Uh, that year ideal to Leipzig went through in September, so that would have finalised on January the 1st. Manolas to Paris Saint-Germain. Alexandro to Leverkusen. Emre Jan to Lyon. And that's as far down as I can go. That's how big a season it's been for transfers. 
as far down as I can go is still £36.3 million. Pounds. That's incredible. Pinto stays. Villa tried to steal him and they were cheeky about it. Ajax stumped up the cash but couldn't agree terms quickly enough. Pinto stays. I apologise that we couldn't work out deals for Burke or Device. But that's the way that it went. They weren't willing to negotiate. So I tried. I tried. We are in eighth on 46 points. Three points off the playoffs. And with the way things stand, it's really only that sixth place that's going to be available, isn't it? Because it's 15 points to Bournemouth in fifth. You can tell the difference, can't you, between the former Premier League sides and the rest of the league. Villa leads Norwich, to be fair. The battle for that second automatic promotion spot is very hot indeed. The title is gone, but any of four sides could finish second and any of a load could finish in sixth. That's what we're gunning for. We're going for that sixth spot. Join me tomorrow as we take on Preston, who are there or thereabouts, Rotherham, Bournemouth and Reading who are there or thereabouts, I think, around us, aren't they, Reading? Oh, sixth and seventh will play eighth tomorrow. Big games, huge games. Let's get the points we need. Let's chase those playoffs. I'll see you tomorrow.